we looked at the uh, Fisher projections, which are a way of um, two-dimensionally representing these three-dimensional carbohydrates when they're in their open chain form. And then we looked at how these monosaccharides actually exist almost entirely in a cyclic form. And so now we're going to look at an, in a way to represent the cyclic form in two dimensions. And this is called a Haworth, Haworth projection. Your book calls it a Haworth projection formula. I've never heard the use, word formula used there. I just call it a Haworth projection. Um, so in a Haworth projection, we've got um, our ring like this, and we're looking at it edge on. So we're, we're looking at it mostly from this direction, and that's why here they've drawn this with a, a darker because this is coming towards you. And you'll notice that this is not um, all equal angles because we're looking kind of at the side of it, a little from the top, but mostly at the side. The oxygen in the ring, and there's always going to be an oxygen in the ring, is for a six-membered ring, is going to go in the upper right corner. For a five-membered ring, it's going to go on the top. And we always draw these in the same position because they are so complicated. So we just draw them in one position, and then we can recognize them more easily. Um, so D or L form has to do with that terminal CH2OH group and the chirality at that um, last carbon. So for a six-membered ring, if it's the D isomer, this group will be sticking up. And if it's the L isomer, that group will be going down. Now this is unfortunate because it would be great if the D was down, wouldn't it? D for down. But it isn't that way. Almost all of the ones we're going to be looking at are the D isomers because that's what's mostly found um, physiologically. So we're almost always looking at the D isomer and I think they chose the D isomer to be up because things get very crowded when you have that in the middle of the ring so we're almost never going to see this um, it's always going to be up but if you should happen to see it down that's because it's the L isomer then there's the alpha and beta forms which is what is this hydroxy group doing so we talked about this um, in terms of, I, I talked about beta being birds that are flying above and alpha being fish that are swimming below the ring. And that is true for the D isomers. Um, the beta form is going to have both of these groups on the same side. So this group that determines the alpha and beta and this one that determines the L, and D, L or D isomer. So for the D isomer, which is the one we're almost always going to be looking at, then if this hydroxyl group is up, it's the beta anomer. And if it's down, it's the alpha anomer. But if you have the L isomer, this is down, and then the beta is on the same side. So I think a way to remember that would be like this. The, the beta form has both groups on the same side. Both groups on the same side. The alpha form, they're going to be on the opposite sides. Sometimes we draw these and we're, we don't want to specify which form or it doesn't matter, and so then the hydroxyl group gets drawn straight out, um, sometimes with a wavy line. So if you wonder, why is that a wavy line? They're just trying to indicate that it doesn't matter. It could be alpha or beta. We don't, we don't care which one. Any questions? So we just kind of have to get used to looking at them this way. So we just talked about this being the, the D isomer because it's sticking up. And this would be the alpha form because it's down and it's opposite of that one. Specifically which monosaccharide you have, you know, maltose or glucose or fructose or whatever, is going to depend on the specific orientation of the other um, hydroxy groups. So when we look at the Fisher projection, things that are on the left side are up 
and things that are on the right side are down. And the way I think of this is um, to take this Fisher projection and make it into a Haworth projection, you pr think of it as cutting down a tree. It's falling over. And so um, see this is on the second carbon. It's that one. This is on the third carbon. That's this one. They're both on the left side of the Fisher projection, so they're going to be up on the Haworth projection. Because if you tip this guy, you tip him over, it doesn't help rotating the iPad. When you bring this down, these guys are on the bottom, on the right side is on the bottom, and these guys are on the top. And so this hydroxy group over here that's on the bottom is this guy right here. And this one, what happened to that one? Well, this is the oxygen that becomes the oxygen in the ring. The chirality at this number five carbon has to do with whether this group is up or down. And so in the D, this is up, and in the L, that would be down. And I would expect that that might be a little fuzzy to you guys, but there it is. Any questions? So let's do an example. Draw the Haworth projection formula for both anomers of D idos, a monosaccharide whose Fisher projection formula is shown here. So how do we do that? Well, I would picture this now sideways, and there was one, two, three, four things crossing in the middle. This hydroxy group on the second carbon is on the left, so it's going to be on the top here. The next one's on the right, so that's on the bottom. I'm just, gonna, I'm just drawing this sideways. Left, right, left, right would be up, down, up, down. And so here's our, our carbonyl group. And here's our, I'll draw it this way, CH2OH group at the end. Do you see what I did? I just, I took this guy and I knocked him over and drew it here. I left these H's off because this is cluttery. Okay, so I knocked him over. This oxygen is going to become the oxygen in the ring. This is one, two, three, four, five. This is a six carbon, a hexose. This carbon on the end doesn't get included in the ring, but the oxygen does. And so this will be a six membered ring. So I can just go ahead and draw the ring. For the D isomer, which is what it tells us, and we can see that because this hydroxy group is on the right. The D isomer means that this guy, the CH2OH, is going to be sticking up over there. And then we're going to have things on these other carbons. We'll go ahead and put a line there. When I leave a line here without anything on it, there's a hydrogen. So this has got a hydrogen on it. Let's, let's do some color coding here. So this carbon is this carbon. And this oxygen is this oxygen over here. Okay? It, it takes a little bit to, to be able to see this. 
so there's this carbon and we've got this this guy all taken care of the next one over is this this is going to be on the top bless you So that's going to be on the top. So that's on the top. The next one's on the bottom. And this one is on the top. Now there's also going to be a hydroxy group on this number one carbon. And whether it's up or down tells us whether this is alpha or beta. So we're over here on the right side. Let's draw the beta version. In the beta version, is it up or down? Up. up, because birds fly above the water. So this is beta D idos. To draw beta, I'm sorry, alpha D idos, everything will be the same except for this hydroxy group. It'll be down. So up, down, up, and this is CH2OH. All of these lines that are missing something at the end, those are all hydrogens. We usually just leave those out because they're pesky. So this is the alpha D high dose. Any questions? That's going to take a little practice, huh? When you say the two forms that are on the same side being beta, mm -hmm. what are the two things that are on the same side? It's, let me get a different the red and the blue in that ring? It's this one and this one. They're on the same side of the ring. They're both on top of the ring. And over here in the alpha form, one's on the top and one's on the bottom. It, it's interesting because I, the last time I taught this class, it was out of a different textbook. And they didn't even mention drawing the L forms of these monosaccharides. So I, I'm assuming they're telling us this for a reason, but when you have when you have the D form where this guy is sticking up like a flag and that's the common form that's what's you know glucose in your body it's the D form when this is sticking up then the birds flying over and the fish swimming under works perfectly the only time it doesn't is is if you have if you're drawing the L form does that make sense kind of Anybody else have a question?